Hey everyone, today we're going to show you how to design a good flag. We use the word good for a couple of reasons. First of all, a book called Good Flag, Bad Flag was first published back in 2006 by the North American Vexillological Association. This book describes flags as either being good or bad. The book outlines five basic principles of flag design. Keep it simple, use meaningful symbolism, use two to three colors with good contrast, do not use lettering or seals, and be distinctive. We're about to create a flag and the design obeys all five principles. Therefore, we would describe it as a good flag. After we finish creating the flag, we're going to tell you the other reason why good is a good word to describe it. For the flag we're about to create, we're going back to using paper and pencils, as well as using some help from a ruler and eraser. But we're also going to show you a digital version of our design later, as well as variants of the design. We're going to begin by drawing the outline of the flag. We're going to make it 6 inches across and 4 inches down. This will give us a flag proportion of 2 to 3, which is the most common proportion used for national flags. And speaking of national flags, we're going to be using elements of a number of country flags for our design. As well as using the principles of flag design as a guide, the other huge aspect of flag design is using other flags as inspiration for your creation. So while staring at a blank canvas might feel a little intimidating, there are tens of thousands of flags from all over the world, and using some of these designs for your flag is a really great idea. Of course, you still want to make sure your final design is distinctive. Here is the national flag of Jordan. It's one of a number of national flags that has a triangle at the heist, the heist being the side of the flag where the flagpole is located. And here is the flag of Bahrain. It uses a serrated design which is essentially a number of triangular shapes. So for our flag, triangles are going to be a key part of the design. So what we're going to do is mark out the location of one quarter of the flag's height, half of the height, and also three quarters of the height. Next we're going to mark the one quarter height inside the flag between roughly one and a half and two inches from the left edge of the flag. And then we're going to do the same thing at the three quarter height. And now the real fun is about to begin. We're going to draw a line from the top left edge of the flag to the marker we drew at one quarter of the flag's height. This line will be two inches, which is half of the flag's height. And once we've drawn this diagonal line, we're going to draw another one. This one will run from the edge of the flag at the halfway mark up to the quarter height mark, where it will join up with the line we just drew. This new line will also be two inches. And with this line completed, we now have a triangle at the top left portion of the flag, which is known as the upper heist and is also called a canton, and is often used by flags to feature an important flag element, such as the 50 stars used on the US flag. For our flag, the canton is not going to be reserved for a unique element, and instead, we're going to create another triangle right underneath in a lower heist. So we're going to repeat the process to create our two lines of our second triangle, this time using our marker at the three quarter height. And with the two triangles now complete, we're going to erase our markers because we don't need them anymore. Next we're going to draw two more triangles, this time at the fly side, the fly side being the side farthest from the flagpole. We already made our marks outside the flag, so we're putting our markers inside to enable us to draw the lines that will make up the two triangles. The triangle lines will once more be two inches, which means they will be the same size as the two triangles at the high side. And because the bases of the four triangles that run along the flag's heist and fly edges are also two inches, it means all of the triangles are equilateral, meaning the three sides of each triangle are the same length. For the next element, we're going to use the flag of Brazil for inspiration. The flag has quite a few elements, including a yellow diamond shape, which is also called a rhombus. We're going to use a rhombus at the center of our flag. So to draw the rhombus fairly accurately, we're going to mark the point that's halfway across the flag and a quarter of the way down. This will mark the top point of the rhombus. Then we're going to mark the bottom point, which again will be halfway across the flag but this time would be at three quarters of the flag's height. Now we're going to draw two line markers which will be located halfway down the flag. We're going to draw these towards the heist and fly of the flag in between the triangles on each side. We now have all the markers we need, so we're going to draw the first line of the rhombus starting at the top point and drawing a two inch line to the half height marker on the fly side. Next we'll draw the second line which will run from the bottom point to the point where the first line meets the halfway marker. And once again this line will be 2 inches. And then we'll complete the rhombus by repeating the process at the high side. And after erasing the markers we can now see what we have. We have 4 triangles along with a rhombus. 
because of the way we designed the shapes, the diagonal lines run at the same angle and this gives consistency and elegance in the design. And because all the lines are 2 inches, it means that the rhombus is exactly the same size as two of the triangles combined. Now let's colour the flag. For the four triangles, we're going to colour them red. There are six colours which are part of what is known as the standard colour set. Red is one of them. The others are black, blue, green, white and yellow. The paper we're using is white, so white will also be one of the colours of our flag design. White will be used for the areas in between the triangles and the rhombus. So now with the red triangles complete and the white already provided by the paper, all that's left is the colour the rhombus. We've decided to go for blue. Red, white and blue flags are pretty common and some very well known flags around the world use these three colours. These colours work great together which is why they're used in combination so often. But because of this, some people have grown a little weary of this three colour combination on flags. So here is the completion of our flag sketch. And here is a digital image of the flag. Creating the flag digitally has many advantages over a hand drawn sketch. For one thing, it allows us to easily and quickly change the colours of our design. So for those of you who may be a little tired of red, white and blue, here are some other colour combinations using the same design. All of these examples use three colours, but we could also use just two. Here are some examples where the triangle and rhombus are the same colour, giving us a total of two colours for each flag. Whether we use two colours or three, this follows the colour principle of flag design, which recommends two or three colours. And all of our designs have good colour contrast, with dark colours separated by light. So what about the other principles of flag design? The design is simple. It uses very simple shapes consisting of straight lines. When it comes to symbolism, this of course all comes down to what the flag is meant to represent. Our flag represents the micronation of Mountania, which we invented for the purposes of this video. The four triangles symbolize the four states which make up the country. The rhombus represents the unity of the four states as one nation. Red symbolizes the hard work, courage, passion and strength of the people. Blue symbolizes the loyalty of the people to the country. The triangles also convey the mountainous terrain which can be seen in all four states. White represents the snow caps in the mountains as well as a bright and peaceful future for the nation. Our design doesn't have any lettering, seals or any other complicated elements such as coats of arms. And finally, we think this flag is distinctive. We're not aware of any flags that closely resembles our design. As we saw in the design process, we took elements from various national flags but we use these elements to create a unique overall design. So our flag satisfies all five basic principles of flag design and we can therefore say that it is a good flag. But the other reason why we say it's good is because we don't think this is a great flag. Opinions among you will vary but in our opinion this flag is lacking in the wow factor. So while it's a good design we don't think it's particularly inspiring. So to sum up, try to follow the five basic principles of flag design. But also bear in mind that bending or breaking some of the principles can still result in a good flag, or even a great one. For example, the country of Bhutan has a rather complicated dragon on its flag, but this flag is loved by many flag enthusiasts. And here is the flag of South Africa, another much loved flag which uses six colours, double the recommended maximum of three. And the other main piece of advice, take inspiration from other flags, use elements that you think look good while making sure your final design is easy to distinguish from other flags. We hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully you'll have learned a few things that will help to improve your skills as a flag designer. If learning about flags and designing flags is something you're interested in, then be sure to hit the subscribe button because we have a ton of flag related content, including features that involve you guys and your flag designs. And we have some exciting new features coming up in the future. Until next time, bye for now and thank you for watching.